McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop with Heather McDonald on YouTube. Please remember to subscribe, share, spread the word, and tell your best friends and people you don't even like that much about this incredible YouTube channel so I can keep doing it. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I'm here with the original favorite, my good friend, my heterosexual <laughs> life partner who I've never made out with. No. Chris Frangiola. Thank you. Merry post Christmas. I know it's over. Just like that. Quickly. Was yours canceled due to I felt like every Christmas got last minute canceled due to Omicron or Absolutely. whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. No. You didn't My you went Christmas right through, was on. absolutely great. Delightful. Delightful. Our plan was um, to go out to Palm Desert where my sister Shannon lives. Right. We got a beautiful, which was nice. Okay. So Peter was looking at houses for us to get like an Airbnb. Yeah. And he's like, I'm just going to get this one from a place we've gone to before, which is completely nice, close to my sister. It's not great. I remember it didn't have a lot of sunlight. It was like a couple stories, like a little townhome. Uh-huh. But I'm like, oh, how much time? I'm not going to fight with them. I'm just so happy that we're going. Right. So then I pull up, and it's a totally different place. Oh, and was I was it like, a Christmas are we in the surprise? Or? It was. Peter had pulled a Christmas surprise. It was a Christmas surprise. And I go, is this the right place? And then for some reason, my name wasn't on it, and Peter and Drake were behind us. So I go to my sister's house, and then Drake called me, and he goes, we're here. Your name's now on the list. And you were going to be pleasantly surprised. And then he sent me a photo, and I was like, wow. I have to say, the only other time Peter did this was when we got married and we were going on our honeymoon, and uh-huh. the guy was driving us to the airport. And he goes, oh, are you first class or regular? And I go, regular. He goes, no, first class. Whoa. And that was the first time I'd ever been on first class. Really? And that was pre-9-11, so it was like a completely different experience. Yeah, like they fed there. you and they were nice. <laughs> they were happy. People, now it's oh, – forget suck. 9-11. Now COVID. I mean it is like – Yeah, and like half of them have COVID. That's why the flights are it's canceled. It's like a hostage situation now flying. I mean you're like, can I have some water? Like shut up and sit down. Okay, I'll try to <laughs> – <laughs> I just, I'm joking. They're like, fucking die. Drink it through the straw. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, through the mask. Oh, it's um, the worst. Yes. Yeah, so we had fun. The first yeah. night we went out to dinner. Um, Palm Springs, you said, right? Yeah, Palm Desert. Okay. And then the next night we went to their country club and it was very quiet because wow. I think people had plans. Like when my sister was making reservations three weeks ago, it was very hard to get in. Yeah. And then everybody probably got sick and canceled. Everybody canceled. And then the last two nights, one night we did at her house when we did our beautiful rental. Yeah. And we just cooked. We did karaoke. Oh, yeah? Which, by the way, one video I will not be sharing. Um, I will share it at lunch when we have lunch, you and I. But um, crazily, uh, the kids got into the karaoke, and um, they looked up the uh, wet-ass P-U-S-S-Y oh, yeah, song, yeah. WAP. WAP. Mm-hmm. And shockingly, Brandon knew every word without having to look at the lyrics. Well, it's a, it was a hot song and it was catchy, you know? And I mean, he could like do everything. Like, oh, Fuck that rah, rah, Mac truck of my tennis gun round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so then I was uh, dancing as well. My niece was filming it. She laughed so hard. And I'm wow. like, we absolutely cannot post this. But I, I have it in my phone to laugh at for the rest of my life. Good. Because that was some fun. Now, I did see you doing some sort of performance at another party on Instagram. You were at a... Oh, let me just um, hop over to that. We're going to yeah. hop over with all of our topics. Because I was at uh, Jeff are. Lewis's party, mm-hmm. which now a lot of those people <clears throat> from that party have COVID. Is that right? I was tested before. I'm fine. We're all fine. Yeah. But they're apparently... A bunch of people, even though they got tested at the party. The thing is, everybody has it. I I might have it right. I don't know. What do you want me to do? I I don't. I got tested yesterday, but it's only as good as like it's only as good as you drive away from the testing place. (laughs) Maybe I got it just now. You know, I'm I'm sitting at the stoplight from the testing place. That could have happened now. Speaking of COVID, fun. Um, I'm very confused because you know I was a sorority girl, Mm -hmm. and you know right now we're on Omicron. Oh yes, but. The alphabet order, it makes no sense that we're yeah. already on Omicron, and technically it's like the third strain. I know. I did read something about way, why that is. The, the way they – I learned the Greek alphabet. Mm-hmm. 
was you learn it and then there was a song. So I had Annie pick it out because I knew once I read it, the tune would come back because like Lou Landis says, I, I have a musical ear. <laughs> is there, a musical is there ear. an Omicron song? No, this is the Greek alphabet oh, song. Okay. okay, so this is the way the Greek alphabet goes. So this is why I don't get why we're already on Omicron. Oh. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, capta, lambda, mu, nu, xi, omicron, pi, rho, sigma, tau, epsilon, phi, psi, phi, chi, psi, omega. Wow. So the point is, we're on Omicron. Mm -hmm. So we still have pi, rho, sigma, tau, epsilon, phi, chi, psi, omega left before we're done with COVID. Yeah. But I don't understand why we're not on gamma. Because we the first would be alpha. The second would be beta, and the third, which is Omicron, is the yeah, third we went one. To delta after we had delta Why are we skipping around? So then, Annie said it's because they don't want to offend two um, Asian leaders that are named Nu and Zai. Oh, is that true? That's what she read. Yeah. Okay, I, I I read that too, but yeah, maybe that's the case. You know, all right. I'm thinking pi might be fun. Yeah, sigma, that's a mm-hmm. good one. Psi. Um, that was the guy who sang Gangnam Style, though. They would, oh. you don't want to offend him. Oh, but Gangnam Style. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, and I also rage. feel like Kai, like a lot of people, Kai and X. Yeah. They don't want to offend those people. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm sure someone's going to write a long explanation explaining to me. And you know what? I really don't care. It's coming. Yeah, exactly. So I just thought that was interesting and the fact that I could remember how to sing that song. So I sang um, with a piano accompaniment, Jingle Bells. Uh-huh. And I put it on my Instagram. Yeah. And the... Next day, about 32 hours later after posting, Chris Jenner posted Chris Jenner's Jingle Bells, in which she recorded it with Travis Barker. Oh, I saw As that. As you can see, she's wearing a red sequence dress, spaghetti well, strap with a slit, and so am I. But that picture you showed of Chris Jenner was from when she was a teenager or something. I'm just saying. It? Yeah. Um, do I think it's a coincidence? Yeah. Yes, I do. I think it's a coincidence. But I just thought it was interesting that literally the next day she's wearing the same thing I'm wearing, singing Jingle Bells, but professionally recorded with her soon-to-be tattooed son-in-law. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to get into the Kardashian Christmas in a moment. But first, let's talk about the hottest news. Chris, did you know that both tiny twins of Selling Sunset broke up with their girlfriends within a week of each other? I did. I knew this. I, I Yeah. Now, So, Chriselle has broken up with Jason. Jason. Her boss at Selling Sunset. And coincidentally, his brother Brett was dating this girl named Tina Louise, not not the ginger. Not ginger yeah. who I was on my Christmas card. I know, I didn't get a Christmas card, but I saw I didn't get one. But I saw it on Can you take online. one home today? We have plenty. <laughs> sure, um, I'll take one home three days after Christmas. <laughs> yes, and put it on your fridge. You know, how do me a favor and just put it in the trash can now and save me the trip. <laughs> <laughs> what am I save it? You gotta show your wife. Oh, I showed my I showed my wife on the phone. She liked it. You're shut up and you're yeah. taking one All home. All right, I'll Dick. take one home. Shall I? All right, listen. I don't know why this girl has such a cool name like Tina Louise, who's ginger in Gilligan's Island, but she's like a pretty blonde with some tattoos. She looks pretty hot. Anyway, I don't know what she does. She like owns a restaurant or something. She they both broke up and she said it's because both tiny twins don't want to have kids. Oh, they don't want. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, I'll say this: the Chrishell one. Now, I'm always uh, hesitant to say this on this podcast because no everyone likes reality TV. But this one felt a little fake to me for Selling Sunset. Am I wrong in saying that? It felt a little. Let's get. We needed some drama here on the show, and let's create some drama, and this will be it. I. Don't I- know. I definitely think they were boning. Really? Yes. Okay. Because when I interviewed Mary, when someone's sitting right across from me, yeah, I just okay. think I would have could tell. And again, that's like a weird. Too many people would have to do a cons- like. A, why I don't really right. believe in conspiracy theories is like a hundred people aren't going to keep a secret. Three people aren't going to keep a secret. Right. So unless the two of them were like, let's pretend like we're boning and on trips and stuff. So- I don't. Yeah. She said they were like sneaking into each other. She said she knew. Okay. Before it came out, and that she had to cover for them because they weren't ready to come out with it yet. Right. Which happens when people are working together. They're but now, am like- I am I mistaken? Didn't she also date the guy she danced with on Dancing with the Stars? 
She, and wasn't there a crossover between yes, those two she, 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 filmings? It was this dancing guy, which I don't know if he was her partner or some other dancer yeah, on it, but right. she danced with someone I and mean, dated someone from Dancing with the Stars in between the This Is Us guy who she was married to yeah. and him. So clearly she doesn't have a type, okay? But um, – yeah. I'll say this about the short twins from Selling Sunset. Yes. They're not bad looking guys. I, I think they're, they're like attractive oh, guys, very but attractive. they're just tiny. Tiny. They just dress tiny. nice. They look like they're successful they have money, guys. They're fun. They've got nice pearly But whites. they're just tiny. Do you think they don't want to have kids? Because oftentimes identical twins will give birth to identical twins. Like they could each have a set of identical twins. Yes. And they it knew runs, what, genetic what little yeah. nightmares they were. Yeah. And they're just like, I just don't want it. That could be the case. Mm-hmm. Also, they all have like terrifying homes with balconies, like overlooking sunset. Yeah, glass I mean, balconies. Every, <laughs> like you can't have babies in those no. houses. Pools that just, you walk out into the pool. <laughs> I know. That's, you, Everybody's home on this unselling sunset is a death trap for a toddler. I'm trying to get into season two. I'm trying. I. I, I think, liked season one. I was really into it, Selling Sunset. Yes. Season I think we're two. On season three. Or, or whatever it is. Season okay. three. Whatever. Yes. The, new, the newest season. The one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I've just, I don't know. I love the house. Seeing the houses yes. is great. I mean, honestly, I, I think if it weren't for drone shots, the series would be over in 10 minutes. <laughs> like, it's just, it's a constant series of drone well, shots. Of, we do know this is a very, very, very fake reality show compared to million dollar listings. Right. Because, you know, those are absolutely there are their listings. They yeah. doing they and all those people on that show care more about their actual listing jobs than this. Right. They're realtors before and they'll be realtors after. If you want to come along for the ride, film me, but like yeah. I'm getting this deal. So this is someone did a deep dive on it. Forgive me for not giving you credit, but it's someone I follow. But it was like so many of the listings were no, not their listings. Yeah. Like they, they literally <laughs> like called, like production called up other realtors and were like, "Hey, can we present Walk this?" I don't know. Yeah. yeah, and the person probably like, "Sure, if it's not sold in three months, that'll help sell it." So right. fine, you're still, we're gonna still put the address, but we're just gonna make it look like it, it's Chriselle's listing. Yeah, or that Chriselle is showing it to another girl. So that they can come over, walk around in their heels, look at the infinity pool where a toddler would fall off the cliff, and then say, you know, I just want to say it was, you know, very upsetting when Christine, you know, didn't pull out yeah. my chair for me. And then they talk about that for 25 <laughs> minutes. So it's like a lot of it is just I love the that you see in the background in the Oppenheim group. Yes. Uh, sto- the you know, office. Whatever, whatever it is. You see the real people working. <laughs> They must be thrilled. Like, gee, somebody's got to do the shit here. You know, like we got to we got to keep the roof on this place. And they're, and they're just typing away in the background. And their fake dramas going on around yeah. them. Christine Quinn's always walking in and some. Well, you know, because everybody's house. laptop is blank. Yeah, because right. they don't have like the sign off for what they're actually working yeah. on. So it's like like this. <laughs> It's like, like, and they're literally this close to working together. So it's like, hold on, I'm just gonna twirl around and hold it. Oh, Chris, remember that house that I was trying to get the listing? What did you say? The, remember the when house. I was telling you that I was showing that NBA player that house out in you, Calabasas? Yes, Calabasas. I just got a call, and it just sold $200,000 over asking. Congratulations. Hold on, we're going to go ring the bell. Yeah. <laughs> did you, and then the two little guys are sitting there. The one little guy seems like he's all business. <laughs> Brett. The, Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, yeah, go out. And they sit next to each they other. Pop up, yeah. What did he say? I mean, it literally looks like they should just walk. The yellow brick road goes to that little area. <laughs> okay, then what does he say? Yeah. Uh, you, know, it's just, you know, he always pops up and goes, hey, just got a $27 million deal. <laughs> yeah. Stupid. Just sold it. Oh, my God. Then was, they go have Wait, dinner. was that the contemporary house? They're all contemporary. Yeah. We haven't seen no, nothing but contemporary Nobody, houses. They never walk into a fixer-upper, you know? Never. We'll just tear out these carpets. It's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why it's like, because they know... People don't want to see this. This isn't yeah. Chip and Joanna no, Gaines. No. This isn't HGTV <laughs> right. where someone's got put one hundred seventy thousand yeah. into it and got two thirty on sales day. You're like, right. all that work for ten thousand. <laughs> like you're like, oh my god, yeah. So no, that's why we watch it. We want to see tiny people in tiny tiny clothes. Yeah. 
in big, enormous houses. I love it. I love the houses. It does make it's Los, real estate porn. Los Angeles. It's real estate porn. It's it exactly. makes you go. Maybe I don't want to move to Texas. No, it's the one. <laughs> I know they. I mean, how whoever controls that drone to keep it from showing tents on the sidewalks must be so skilled. Because so skilled. Yeah, I bet there's probably an editing machine. Yeah. that you can do. They can that. just erase them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I agree. It makes me want to stay it's here. It's pretty exciting. Um, speaking of, um, I mean, what about Christmas parties? Are we oh, going to do Christmas oh, yes. parties? Oh, yes. Oh, let's talk about the Christmas party. We have, you, we have so many Christmas parties to talk about. Let's talk about, let's go back to my Christmas party. Oh, well, I know we'll get to all Okay, so topics. tell me, well, first Lisa, of all, I want to discuss Sarah's what Christmas I saw party. about this Christmas party. Okay. Now, why was there like an Jeff overweight Lewis's. stripper? A male. Santa. But he was, that was a joke, right? I think when Jeff ordered a stripping Santa, they thought the Santas had to be closer to an actual Santa's age. Yeah. Which, by the way, obviously, if Santa was real, he would have gotten COVID in 2020 and already oh, died. God. Yeah, yeah, he would have been long gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just kidding, everyone. Oh, God. <laughs> Santa isn't real and neither was that joke. Right, okay. Right. But <laughs> do we. Oh my God! Do we have to cut that joke out? I don't know why people. Yeah, that's Santa would have gotten it, but okay, whatever. No, that was. I okay. I think he's alive, but I think he would have gotten Omicron yeah. this year. Okay, mm-hmm. all I'm saying. Anyway, um, the guy wasn't that overweight. He was just a little bit older. He just wasn't like complete like Channing Tatum chip chip deals. Yeah, right. Yeah. So oh, they. But not, I thought, and he was like probably like late forties. Yeah, I'm not saying yeah. anything wrong with the guy. He looked like he was, you know, yeah. ex-convict who was trying to make a buck on Why Christmas. Why not? Yeah. That's what it looked like. Yeah. But I thought it was an interesting choice for Jeff Lewis, who I feel has a couple of dollars. I thought he'd go very – get the top of the top. Give me the hottest guy you have right. to come over here and dance on Jackie Schimmel or whatever. I th- I don't know how specific he got in ordering. Yeah. I will ask because I'm supposed to be on a show tomorrow. But – he said, I, I think that he kind of wanted it to be a surprise because, like, Leah Black, the, she had no idea who was going to strip. So she was like, oh, good, he can pass out my gift bags because she's got a skincare line that everyone got her good skincare, which I okay. like. And um, so I think he kind of wanted it when the person appeared to almost look a little bit like a Santa. Okay. Oh, yeah. got it. All right. So, but then he like was like a non white Santa. I felt but a like Santa. I was getting, there was one point where I saw him like pulling some woman's shirt back on that had come off. Like in one of the videos. He was Nobody saying. got naked, but he did get pretty hardcore with yeah. one girl. We like laid her down and stuff. Yeah, that's the one. And, and people, you know, um, they're like, go, Heather. I'm like, no, I already sang for you. Yeah. And my husband is here. And thank God, because when Drake came to pick me up, always being my designated driver, he, he was like, oh, can you, he's like, tell me that, you know, you didn't do that. I go, no, I didn't. Yeah. You know, I do a lot of embarrassing things mm-hmm. as their mother, as a stand-up comic and doing the show. Sure. I don't have an OnlyFans yet. <laughs> and I will not allow – I was not into strippers when I was 25. I right. wasn't into being male strippers. And I, I think I told you this, the most horrible story why I'm tr- absolutely traumatized. Back when I learned this Greek alphabet, uh-huh. okay, I was yeah. social chairman at USC, sure. Gamma Phi. And I planned this really fun party the, at this ranch, and it was going to be a Western theme, okay? And I had this really hot guy that didn't go to SC, and he was like an actor, and he was named Mr. Tate. He was going to be my date, okay? Uh-huh. He was so cute. And um, I was so excited, and I was ske- doing it with this this gay guy who helped plan my, my party. Like, I found, like, a gay party planner, and I had all this money to do a party, like a full budget in the sorority thing. So... He's like, let's do a hayride. Let's do this. And I'm trying, I mean, we're just becoming best friends. And he goes, there's a little bit money left in the budget. I'm thinking about an entertainment thing, but I kind of want to make it a surprise for you. And I go, make it a surprise. Like, I was oh, just like, why not? Right. So the party's going great. Let's barbecue. We go on the hayrides, people drinking, dancing. Where's the hayride? It just goes around like the. There was like some campus? ramp. Like, so we would get, no, no, you get in a bus. Okay. This is back. When sure. college was fun. Okay? Yeah, yeah, back when you could you do get in a big bus with your dates. You mm-hmm. all drink in the bus. Yes, Everyone can right. drink in the bus. Yeah. You get to the location 30 minutes from SC, uh-huh. and it's this ranch, and it's set up with bartenders and food and everything. Wow. And you are you get to go as our date. Yeah. Like, guys are dying to be asked, okay? So then, all of a sudden... These guys come out and they're wearing Western outfits and they've been there. Right. And they start and they put me in a chair and they do a striptease for me. Oh. 
Oh, that's the surprise. And I'm like, I remember looking at my date and he's like, everyone was like, what the fuck? Like, everyone's like 19 years old. Like, (laughs) what the fuck is going on? Right. And these guys were like clearly gay and they're like grinding up on me. And I'm horrified. And I'm like, this is not my bachelorette. This is like, this is so, this is a long time ago. So it was even like, not as like, what? You be you, boo. Yeah. Like everybody's like, what the hell's going on? Like <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> so, wow. So afterwards, I called the guy and I'm like, you're putting that, whatever that cost, I want back in the budget. Because yeah. like, yeah, you I'm not allowing that. That was not what I wanted. But as someone at a party watching someone else be, you know, like roped and touched right. to the, you know, to the magic mic music. Very entertaining after a couple drinks. I just don't want that to be me. I think so. I agree. Watching it is entertaining. I feel like it's it's embarrassing for everybody involved. Um, you know, like the person yeah. getting it, the person doing it, even the people watch. I feel like secondhand embarrassment yeah. when I watch it. I don't know. I feel like the. I felt like I thought the days of strippers because of the times we live in. You know, might be kind of on the outs. Yes, I you agree. Know? And, you yeah. know, and like. But they didn't make that guy get a COVID test, too. So I don't know how some of these people got it. But guess what? Some people got it. Everyone's vaccinated. If they have it, I mean, I don't know what yeah. to say, you know? Wow. But um, but Drake was over the vacation. He was saying, you know, like that ASU, he's like, you know, and he goes, and I'm so bored till about 9 o'clock every night. And I go, what happens at 9, like, 9 o'clock? He goes, well, that's when the parties start. And I go, okay, well, that sounds pretty good if there's a party every night at 9 o'clock. He goes, but they're not good parties. Like, the parties I take you guys to and pick you up from are, like, way better. Whoa. And I go, oh, you mean the, the $7 million Hollywood home of Leah Black? Yeah. When you, that party looked more fun than your ASU right. dorm party on a Tuesday night? He's like, I mean, there's no atmosphere. There's nothing to look at. He's like... And you can't do anything anymore. Everybody's, you know... I, I mean... <laughs> I think we slut shamed everyone out of a good time. You know what I mean? Yes. We all, everybody slut shamed everybody for doing what we did. Or, you know, I just read the population of the world has, it's the first time in a hundred years, population grew the least amount in a hundred years. And I believe that is because of slut shaming. We <laughs> slut shamed everybody out of having a, you know. No one's getting knocked no, up. No, nobody's having a good time anymore. I'm like, oh, there you go. Now there's no, nobody's being born. Yeah, yeah, no one's getting together. Well, well hopefully we'll change and that. Drake's not having a good time for um, party. So wait, we went to another party. Okay. Uh, our Sarah Colonna party. Oh, yeah, Sarah Colonna's about. party, yeah. She had a party. She had carolers greeting us. She had cocktails. <clears throat> right? There was a lot going on. Yeah. A snow, snow machine. that where got. Was this, where was the snow machine? Well, what happened was they had a snow machine on the roof of the house and it was blowing snow. Yeah. When I got there, I was, you know, I'm always the first one there because I have a kid now and yeah. I got to get out of the house yeah. as quickly as possible. So uh, I was there er, and the snow machine was blowing nicely. Yes. Then I believe it got clogged somehow and it just looked like, you know, it blows like suds. It's like, it's like oh, soap. Yeah. So then it just looked like the washing machine was on the fritz or something because it was just blowing chunks of suds. Out of the, suds on, just onto the on, roof? Onto the lawn. It was like falling off the roof onto oh, the lawn. Oh, I did not even notice yeah, that. I don't, yeah. Okay. So anyway, there was that when I first got yeah. there. Then it was a picture guy. Oh, yeah. Like a, you know, like a step and repeat kind of right, red carpet. Right. He took a picture. Yes. And it was all fun. Did you have fun there? I did have, I did have fun. There was some... Um, <laughs> There were some Chelsea lately people there. That there was, was a lot, yeah. Yeah, that you then you kind of like have some unfinished business with. And you had unfinished business, right? Well, the one person that I was just about to ask, the producer of the show, the the million dollar question, not the million dollar, maybe a seventy five thousand dollar question. Her, now let's. I'll just talk, say who this is. Yeah, she was one of the executive producers of Chelsea lately. Yes, uh, she was there. We've seen her and before. And I want to say the question I would have asked her, she would have not had any say in making this happen, but I thought she could have given a tiny bit of insight had I gotten the question out. But then we were interrupted, you know, like you're like now I get why housewives are like, can you let me finish? And then right. they're like, don't put your hand up. That's what I felt like saying to this one girl who's very nice who came up to us. Yeah. But like I was just about to ask this question and then Drake arrived Again, oh, you were on again, the way out. Again, I should tell Sarah Colonna that Drake thinks that Sarah and John's party looks a lot more fun than his 9 p.m. parties at ASU as well. But can so I also say like, Drake's every... not really – he's not going in, right? He's just outside. Does he actually come in No, but he just was them? letting me know that the parties he takes me to and drops me off yeah. 
are just so much better okay. than his college parties. And I'm like, well, they should be. We're yeah. old and we have some money to spend. Right. Like, okay. So, anyway. <laughs> so, so what was – are you going to say the million-dollar question? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Let's hear it. My question was – to this person is when the show ended mm-hmm. earlier than it was supposed to mm-hmm. by like five months. Right. We had fought so hard to get Writers Guild uh-huh. and we were going to have a contract from July to December. Right. It ended in August and they came to us and they said to the seven writers, uh-huh. you're not, they're not going to honor your contract. So the last check you get is the last day you work. Right. So the executives got a big payout. Mm-hmm. And the people below us got two weeks of every year they paid. So if someone was there yeah. for seven years, they walked away with 14 weeks pay. Right. But we didn't. Yeah. And I just never have said that to any of the executives. Yeah. And I just wondered if they ever had a conversation like, this kind of sucks, but unfortunately there's nothing we can do because it's E's decision and I'm really sorry. I kind of feel bad for them, but what are we supposed to do? Just something. Right. I just want to know if they ever said, shit. The three of us are getting this amount, and the people below are getting this amount, and the seven people that went to Writers Guild for eight weeks in a row right. to fight for Writers Guild is getting screwed. Yeah, and you. I mean, get... I accepted it. I remember when they said it. To I us. honestly don't even remember that now that you mention it. It's, and it's, I just I... was, I was just kind of like, well, I'm not going to give up the few weeks that we had that I do get a paycheck. Yeah, but I remember going, this is really unfair. Like, yeah. this is really screwed because. We were. I remember when I heard it was July. I was like, "Oh, well, good, because we already signed for next six months." Yeah. So we'll get at least we'll get paid till the end of the year. Great. I don't have to work for the last, you know, but I get paid. I just remember how quickly they took down my placard that said <laughs> "parking only for Chris Frangiola." I had my own personal parking spot, and there was literally a guy out there with a screwdriver. Yeah. Like I wasn't even pulled out yet, and he was taking it off the wall. I'm like, okay, I, can you wait till I drive out before you pull that down? Just I don't need to see. I just remember them going around with certain furniture and saying, should we take this to Netflix? Yeah. I, oh, yeah, that's right. Or should that's we right. take this? I don't think we need it. Well, look what happened in the end. The Netflix is – it's all done. Everything's done. And you, you know, you land. But anyway, that was but, – but I had a good time talking to this executive. I'm happy for everybody. Good. Every, everybody's in a great place. Uh-huh. But – that was my that, question that I didn't get answered. I know. I I was with you for a second talking. The three of us were chatting for a little while. Yeah. And I just couldn't do it anymore. I was just so over. I agree. I should be too. I, was, I still had no, to no, ask no. that question. No, no, I get it. I understand yes. your your angle. But I, I, was, oh, I'm, 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 I was always a little bit over her. Yes, know, yes. I don't say it. But I, so, and then hearing her, you know, <laughs> bullshit or whatever the case may be, I was just like, yeah, I'm done with it all. You know, I'm doing fine. Life's good. Yes. I don't need to hear. And, but I think, I and think, just so you know, this is the one. I, I don't give a fuck. You know, right? But maybe because she, maybe if we weren't interrupted, maybe she would have gotten to that and said. And I also want to say that was kind of screwed. And I'm sorry, but again, I had nothing to do. Yeah. I don't know. I never got the question out. Okay. And I don't care to try to get it out now. Yeah. Anyway. All in all, all in all, a fun party. It really was. Okay. Let me go back to what we were talking. The Queen. Did you know that the Queen, that an, an armed intruder was arrested at Windsor Castle? I did. I saw that. the Queen that. was spending Christmas? Yeah. And also, I, I saw one who tried to get to Kylie's house, too. Yes. What was the yeah. story there? Just another armed intruder trying to climb the fence. You know, I think it happens a lot. Um. Just to go back to, to Christmas stuff, because we're talking about the the Christmas thing. I Now, they didn't have their party. Yeah. Or at least the level of what they, you know, because of Omicron and All everything. Right. And I also think the Travis Barker stuff. I just think this, not Travis Barker, but Travis Scott. Probably oh, yeah. this was a year that I don't even know if it was really in the works, to be honest. Yeah. You know, I got the boot a few years ago. But um, this came out. Did Pete Davidson's mom attend the Kardashian Christmas Eve party? Well, I thought this was very interesting. I went to all of their Instagrams, and they very, very little posting about Christmas. Yeah. I don't know if they're finally learning, like, you know what? Why don't we keep some things just to ourselves? Why don't we not just, like, we don't want to get shit that we even got together at all because of COVID. We don't want to hear about this. We don't, we don't want to look bad that Kanye wasn't there or Scott Disick. So there's very little information on what kind of Christmas they had. But I did pull this. So Kim posted like 10 photos of just she and her four kids. Okay. The girls are wearing pink. The boys are wearing black. She's wearing the chocolate brown now uniform that she's worn in every color. This is like, I mean, just remember when it was just like 
big ski jackets and yeah, sweats. Puffy, very Now puffy. it's just the exact same thing, but a different color every time where it's covering her hands. Yeah. And her feet. So she never has to buy another pair of shoes. She's just getting this uniform made. It's like a uniform that covers the feet all the way to a full full... leotard with the gloves. And I have to say, I don't, I I want this look to pass as well. No, wait, those aren't shoes. That's just part of the outfit. It's like the shoe is built in and you literally come in and you cut in the sleeves. So I'm sure she takes like four people to hop in. Yeah. And I mean, it shows, you know, that she has a great body and tiny waist. For some reason, she just like fell in love with this, like never seeing your hands or feet look. (laughs) And now we all have to suffer till like I don't man know when. Group, blue man group. It's basically, yes. Like she, I don't know if she's done a blue one, but yeah. I've seen pink, mm-hmm. I've seen silver, I've seen black. This is now chocolate. Yeah. And yeah. And then um, and then all all Kendall posted was just gorgeous, you know, her gorgeous gown. And also the Christmas trees, I don't know whose house this is, but they just did very subtle decorations. Just roses stuck in a tree with white lights. So they always change their style every year, okay? And then Chloe, she did about 12 photos of just her looking like she hasn't eaten in probably three weeks except Mm -hmm. for her butt. Right. And looked amazing. (laughs) And then... I mean, I know she looks amazing, but that's a different person, you know, than the... It, it she every picture I see I'm like wait is that I have to look again I have to zoom in I'm like that is Chloe right because I I don't know if it's the makeup or the yeah. contouring like can 2022 be the year we we less contouring of the noses I think people are going a little nuts I on do nose it con- but I've been doing it. Since I knew the song to this Greek but song. But I know your nose. It, your nose looks the no. same as – it doesn't look different. Right. Some people, it's way too much. It, everyone looks like, you know, the, the – uh, everyone looks like they're about to sing at a drag brunch. You know what I mean? <laughs> everyone looks like Tina Turner at a drag yes. brunch. I think it is going to start going a different route just because people are going to get tired of it. It's gonna, or yeah. it's going to be like a more natural look or it's going to be like – I don't know. Something's going to change with makeup soon. Yeah. People are going to get over it and it's going to go like a different route. Yeah, I, I would like that. I would like a little less. Do you want no makeup but still covering your hands and your feet in a cat suit? I'll tell you what I would like. Yes. <laughs> I would like a little less makeup and I would like the eyebrows to start going. I I didn't hate thin. I didn't okay. hate thin. All right. Because I'm starting to see you. I got yours are good. And and I like some, but I'm seeing some that are getting a little wild. Yes. Oh, it's been t- yeah, Groucho yeah. Marx days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Well, I think she wanted to show how hot she looked because you know Tristan, that is her baby daddy to true. He is definitely the father of this third baby. But then this girl is going and doing TikToks. I don't know if it's true or not. It's on TikToks yeah. where she's showing checks she received from him when they were together, and. In her TikTok, she said, I got pregnant and um, he, well, first of all, he paid for my time and everything to be with him. And then uh, he also paid for me to get an abortion. That's what she's saying. Okay. But I don't know if it's true. Now, is this guy, are they still together, him and Chloe? We don't know. Oh. She's just not responding. That's why I kind of think it's sort of interesting between the Tristan thing and the Kanye divorce and, of course, the tragedy of Travis Scott. Right. It was a perfect time to cancel the Christmas party. And it's, it's, they are definitely not posting as much as they used to. Yeah. They didn't give it up. They'll still do like a Skims post and stuff. But it's definitely less. And I wonder if they're like enjoying their lives more. Caitlin had knee surgery. Uh, so I don't know if Caitlin Before was Before or be after there. she got the boot of, out of the uh, Beverly Hills Hotel. Oh, for the ripped jeans? Yeah, because the, the knee was exposed there. Maybe that's yes. why she was wearing a ripped jean, so that her sore the, knee, her could, be, knee. Yeah, could be exposed. I mean, I mean, did you read how angry that curious. message was about the Beverly Hills Hotel not letting, her, not letting her in for ripped jeans? And this is what I don't understand. He used the F word several times well, in his post. She. Her, she. 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 Yeah. She. Now, I'm a little bit surprised yeah. that she would get so angry with that because- Caitlin, through the last 40 years of her life, right. has been a member of country clubs. Yes. Rip jeans, as a fashion statement, has been in for a long time. Right. For as long as I've been a member of a country club, which I was one before, which wasn't as, you yeah. know, she belongs to Sherwood, which is the fanciest out there, fancier than the one I belong to. At least at mine, that is one of the rules. 
Right. No ripped jeans for men, but they make it very clear for women too because they know skinny ripped jeans can be three hundred dollars. But right. were they just for whatever reason that is? It's the not rule. a bad rule because they the ripped jeans now it gets a little crazy. But I have like invited people and they go, you know, and I said. No, you can wear jeans and boots. You just, for whatever reason, you can't wear ripped jeans. It's right. at my sister's country. Like, it's a known thing. Yeah. So I think she may have thought, well, I'm going to a, a restaurant, not a country club. And it does really screw up your day if you came all the way from Malibu. Yeah. And you put your outfit together. Mm-hmm. And you're ready to enjoy a lovely salad and be seen. And they're like, and it's not yeah. like there's like a store that will fit her and she can buy another pair. Right. It's not like those – back in the olden there. days, they'd be like, sir, can I give you a blazer, you know, like – or a tie or Is whatever. Is a fucking Arrow Postal around here? <laughs> no, but what? Arrow Postal, one of those cheap jean stores. <laughs> Get- yeah, so I think yeah. her I think her whole day got screwed up. Uh, and she was like, why can't you make a re- uh, uh, exception yeah. for a star? I know. But – it, it's it was it was a good one. It was a good one. I mean, so and well, I'll say it's been around for a long time because uh, when I was a little child, probably five years old, my yes. mother took me roller skating, uh, Bayshore Roller Rink on Long Island, and yes. I was wearing uh, at the time we called them dungarees. Yes, and they had a very strict <laughs> no dungaree policy at this roller skating. Just rink. no jeans. It, it, dungarees we were calling it, but yes, jeans. No okay. dungarees. Okay, that was the policy. Sat on the door. No dungarees. Did you wear your purple cords instead? No. no. I didn't have them at that time. That was later in life. But I got – they said no dungarees. And they said, well, here's what we can do. We have a box of pants oh, behind box. the counter and we will – you know, so you don't have to go home because it was like so a you kid's, think it have It was a like bo- a birthday party for children. So should they also have a box of pants, do you think, at, at Beverly, Beverly Hills, Hills Hotel? Hotel? Yes. They should have the box of pants and Caitlin could, you know – Rifle through the box of pants. Are any of these going to fit me? <laughs> so I put on, I mean, I'm not kidding. I was six years old. There's, they were men's pants. They were like adult pants. And my mother put them on me, put my jeans in the car, cinched them up with a belt, and there I skated around in giant man's pants. So they were, Did they it's smell? Been, I always feel like any kind of borrowed clothes yeah, I has mean, like a weird smell to them. I don't remember that, you know, but it was... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I wouldn't kill Beverly's Hotel to have a box of pants back there for a situation such as this. That's all I'm saying. I remember being at a roller skating party and everybody was just like not roller skating. And then this song came on and everybody came out to dance. What song? Bump, bump, bump. Another one bites, bites the dust. dust. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And another one bites the dust. Really? And another one gone and another one gone and another one bites the dust. Yes. Roller skating is back in. Is it? Where? I feel like. I'd get it. I feel like people are into roller skating and rollerblading again. I was never great. We used to go every weekend. And yeah. uh, I remember the song that got everyone out there was Super Freak by Rick James. Yeah. Sir, sir, very kinky girl. Can you and like eight year olds are like, yeah, like, yeah. Super Freak. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, Super Freak, Tristan yeah. Johnson, good luck to you. Um, we've talked about that the Kardashians are moving towards the skinny white. Skinny white tattooed. This guy's not guys. that skinny tattooed. This came uh, from a juicy scooper, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. She suggested this one for Chloe. Is that for Miley's brother? Uh, yeah, Trace yeah. Cyrus. He's not skinny. He looks like he has a very nice body. He's completely tattooed, including some face tattoos. And I know that I've been to a Kardashian party with. Um, Billy Ray and the the mom, they were married, they're divorced, they're not together. Yeah. I don't know. But they were together this party. And so they have a connection to the Cyrus family. And I don't know if he's single or not, but I think he would get along with Pete Davidson. I think he'd get along with Travis Barker. And so. Now, am I wrong in saying this? I thought I had read somewhere that Pete Davidson was getting all his tattoos removed. Remember that? Wasn't that a story? I heard that too. Yeah. But I think maybe it's. Maybe it's just around the neck or something. Oh, okay. So that he can do more acting. Oh. Um, right. Okay, let me get back up to what we were doing. Okay, now let's talk about, and just oh, like that. Oh, I watched it last night. Thank you, because let's. we're on episode four. I have not talked about the Sex and City reboot with Chris, so I want to get your hot take on last night's episode. Okay. I've covered it a lot, so let's just cover last night's. A couple of things I'd like to address about it. Um, it's... 
in their I I don't know in their in their uh, quest to be uh, you know right on or on every topic on the right side of every to- hot right topic side of, history. of the day. Yes, yeah. yes. The show is becoming so racist that you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. In, in in trying not to be racist, it's becoming so ra- like watching them walking to parties with black people and not know how to react like the one girl with the uh, okay so the professor charlotte, of the college for if you didn't watch it so yeah. charlotte we'll first talk about charlotte yeah charlotte. so charlotte what's interesting is now that samantha is gone and i we are going to be able to get samantha on the show in a little bit and you can ask oh, her good. Oh, good, she's good. coming out of her calling yeah. in in a minute mm-hmm. um we have all three of the girls also forming strong friendships with other people so and what's good is all those three new friendships are not people that are white. And also I'll say this, they're all good actresses. I feel yes. like the other people are better actresses than yes. the, the, I mean, Sarah Jessica Parker's a good actress. And I think, the other, but I feel, I don't know. Anyway, we'll go. So, uh, I mean, I believe that the, I believe these storylines could happen. Yeah. So now I'm not saying they wouldn't happen, <clears throat> but the forcing of it just seems very weird. So we have Charlotte, who absolutely wants to be best friends with Nicole Parker, who's gorgeous, an extremely wealthy black woman with a cute husband and a couple kids. And I believe that their friendship and their like liking each other would exist. OK, yeah. so she, Charlotte, go, you know, she she invites Charlotte to her husband's party mm-hmm. and she goes, don't tell the other moms. I'm only inviting you. OK, so then Charlotte goes, hmm. I, Harry, I'm going to have a party so I can be friends with my new friend who's – she's black, Harry. Yeah. She's black. Now, let me say this. What? They, they, they live in New York City and they've been living in New York City their whole lives, which – I mean, New York City is a very diverse city. It's the, probably the most diverse of, in the world. I know. Where there's constantly everybody, every nationality and culture and creed and color. I don't. Why are they continuing to be shocked by cornrows? I mean, it's just so, shocking someone, to me. So we looked it up, and basically there's like no female writers on the show. Well, most of yeah. the episodes are written by the two guys, Darren Starr and Michael Patrick Oh, it King. smells and very much of I those think guys. this is the point of view of privileged older white gay men yes thinking it's actually them like we are better than them right according to these guys writing the show because i don't believe women this age living in new york would be acting like this yeah and, and they're like ha- they're like lawyers and, and yes you know it's not like they're uh, it, it, it's and shocking be, like you know and she's just like so she goes um you know so she goes so i'm going to invite these people these people she goes you know and um What's his Mario Cantone? Mario Cantone, which is the funniest part of the show. Mm-hmm. So thank God, hopefully he'll stay on the show. Yeah, him and Sanford. So she's like, I'm inviting them because they're gay. I'm like, it's not because he's been your friend for 30 years. <laughs> like, you're a bitch. I was like, you're a fucking. <laughs> you're the most inauthentic, shallow, awful person. Right. I mean, and so then she's like, Oh my God, Harry, Harry. What you don't want a fifty-seven-year-old Jew to be at your party? Mm. Not you, Harry. Like you always have to state the age, right? right? Yeah. So just, <clears throat> they're going to be the only black couple at our party. What other black people do we know? Want to invite the Jenkins across this across yeah. the hall? Perfect. So she goes over, and the girl's like, "Hi," and she says, "Like you must come to my dinner party tomorrow night." She's like, "Well, I can't. I've got another plan." <laughs> <laughs> Can you just come for a drink? Just pop by. She's like, no, I can't. What? And finally, the girl's like, what the fuck? Get away! Like, yeah. I, t- I haven't talked to you in two years. I don't want to. Like, if anything, if I was even considering stopping for a drink, I certainly don't want to now. You're so yeah. annoying, kissing my ass. So then, they, right? She goes to the party, and she goes up to this woman. She's like, aren't you Connor's dad or whatever? And the girl's like, no, but I know who you mean. But no, that's not me. <laughs> All you black people look alike to me. I know. What is happening? And then the other guy, they're they're talking about a black author or, uh, you know, a book on the elevator elevator ride up. You know, her and the husband are prepping themselves on. They can only talk about black artists and black authors. Yes. And then he spurts out, has anyone read this book? It's like, oh my. It's it's I watch it through like like my like I'm yeah, just it, yeah. but I don't hate it. I can't oh, say that I hate I it. I can't hate it. And then there's moments that are real. <clears throat> okay, so Sarah Jessica Parker gets a realtor friend who is very pretty and 
she is I th- I think she's a little Indian or whatever, but yeah. What's good is we haven't addressed her race. We just addressed that she's pretty yeah. and a good realtor right. and they're like the same age. Mm-hmm. So that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I don't need to also label, but of course they had to get into it. She had to make sure in her dialogue that some some Hindu reference. Right. Just to make sure to the world right. you might not know what ethnicity I am, but just know I'm we not got, white. Uh huh. And, and Michael Patrick King cast me. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. So let me just make a Hindu reference yeah. because you might just think I you know, have a nice tan. Okay, yeah. we got it. So they hit it off, and and then she, what I thought was good is that she gets really pissed because the girl breaks her her photo or whatever while she's trying to sell the place, and then and the girl was single and talking about her dating life, and Sarah Jessica Parker goes, "Well, at least you're still getting out there." And the girl calls her on it. And she's yeah. like, "That was really insensitive and rude. Like just because good I scene." Have- it, that that was liked. a good scene. Yeah. That I With was the like. broken picture. Yeah. Bro, that I was like, this is real. This is mm-hmm. good. They made up. This is the beginning of a friendship. This is a girl being more honest than probably any of her other friends have ever right. been with narcissistic Carrie. So I kind of was like, okay, I'm liking that. All right. now, But now we're four yes. episodes in. Yes. And we need to bury. Big's got to. We, we're done. We're done it with her walking longingly into the apartment going, he's not here. You know? Well, we are pretty much done because the house is going to be sold. Yeah. She's so. moving back to her sad apartment. Well, I don't know why she moved. No, she's still looking for new places. Yeah. I guess she's not going to live there. She's going to find a fresh new place. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yes, and then sadly they had to get rid of Sanford. Well, that was that was his he send-off? died in real life. I know. The guy died in real life. I think and they was, don't the send-off want him. was he moved to Japan? And breaking up with, yeah, yeah. And, and with Mario Cantone. So I'm like, that was sad, but I thought it was a good way they did it because we can't have two people like dying the show, even though yeah. we know what really happened. Right. And then, and then Miranda is goes out to dinner with the professor girl, and I'm like, you know, wait a minute, like now I'm like, do they want to fuck? Oh, because I, I thought she was definitely saving her yeah, her lesbian relationship with it. I think she is. Yeah. But there was one moment where they're like they're just getting along, and I'm like. Okay, I, I don't know where that storyline is going then. Yeah. Because to me, uh, that scene was kind of boring. Every scene is has something in it, you know? Like yes. She, she, first of all, I love when she goes, last night I went to a comedy concert. Yeah. Not a comedy concert. What's that? I've been in this business a long time. I've never heard it referenced as a what comedy. What did you think of that Netflix special? It was... So, well, I anytime an, a real actress, nothing against that woman. I think she's kind she, of a good actress. I think she's a good actress yeah, too. They're giving I, her the lines. Yeah, I like she's her in that. Sh- I like she's her in the show. She's believable as yeah. the person. It's just not funny lines. Exactly. Yeah. And once a regular person has to play a stand up comedian, it's so painful. And I don't know if it's because we're stand up comedians. Yes. It's, it's even extra painful. Right. And I watch, I listened to you guys talk about it on, on yes. your last episode. And the fact that they were standing, which was very strange. Yes. And it's just so – I'm actually shocked that Netflix let them use, first of all, their name. Yes. Which is, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's a legal thing why there. Why wouldn't they say she's got an HBO, HBO special? Max. It's on <laughs> HBO. Yeah. Like, why does she got an HBO special? Like, Netflix special. They, they You know, Netflix and HBO are always fighting with each yeah. other about, you know, content. Maybe that was the real thing. Maybe that was the real wink. Right. Like, fuck you. Your comedy isn't that good on Netflix. Perhaps. I don't know. Yeah. It was uh, so pa- – it, and then, just like watching the banter that the fake banter between Bobby Lee and and the, the, the let's talk about that. Okay, so then there's now we the see them at the, the podcast. Yeah, we see the and like again, like I get it. You know, like I talked about how on you the TV show you they had the head librarian be blind. Mm-hmm. Okay, I just don't think that would be right. the top choice to be sure. the head librarian yeah, at yeah. a. At a public library that's not a Braille library. Uh-huh. Okay. Right. Um, so, okay, but I get it. Let's make them blind and gay and nobody discuss that that's sort of interesting. Just yeah. have it out there in the, in the script, okay? That's what it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be also, at this point in our lives, we're supposed to be also accepting or anything. It's not even a thing. You don't, no, you don't bring up that, but then you have to bring up someone's color all the time. Right. Like, we're not going to bring up the fact that this person's in a wheelchair and Bobby Lee was fucking her and she blew him off. Right. She dumped him. And the girl, I... <laughs> not that listen, she wouldn't be dumping him, t- but I'm just like... probably not yes. a ton of wheelchair actresses. Yes. But that might have been some of the worst acting I've ever seen in my life. I don't know if that was her first day ever doing anything, but it came off. I don't know. Some of it... I'll say this about reboots. 
Uh, which this is, I guess, you know, the Friends reunion, this. Yes. I find them in the end to be a little bit sad. And I, I don't know why. Okay, well, I do know why. Okay. Because a Juicy Scooper wrote a very interesting uh, message post or whatever on my okay. page. And I thought, now this is kind of genius. So this girl is younger than I am. So she was watching the show in her early 20s when the girls were in their mid-30s. And the original Sex of the City. Yeah. And she's just figured out why it's hard for her to watch. Because when she was watching it in her early 20s, even though they were struggling in their 30s with relationships and stuff, it was a lifestyle she aspired to one day attain. Right. This is fun. They have friends. They have some bucks. She's like, now I'm watching it. And they're all like losers. Yeah. Like, Charlotte, wouldn't at this point Charlotte like had a really great charity and like yeah. doing stuff, you know, and then there, she said, and wouldn't Miranda maybe own her own law firm or be doing something? Like, why did she have to go back to school right. to become this? Like, she went to Harvard. She just go back to school to learn about soci- social justice. Like, you're an attorney. Like, you yeah. could, you could, like, why would, if this is what you want to do, why isn't she doing like what Kim Kardashian does? Why isn't she just... Doing pro bono cases or something. Yeah. I mean, maybe she's not rich point. enough. But and then Charlotte, she's like Charlotte would have already, you know, if she needed to work, she would have already like been on a talk show or been a content creator or already yeah. had her own podcast. She wouldn't be like struggling having this girl be like, "Get your socials up." <laughs> you, you know, what did somebody die? Oh, they did. Oh, sorry. And then Bobby Lee's like, "Oh, excuse me, you're blowing me off," you know, and she's rolling away and flipping them off and. I just was like, I mean, it's. I was like, what? But yeah, you know, hasn't Sex in the City always been a little bit cheesy? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the fun of it. It was a little cheesy. I think it is. Even if you go back and watch the old good ones, you know, you know, some they're a little cringeworthy at times. Listen, I love being able to talk about something every week that I feel this passionate about. I know. So I want to. So I don't hate it for that reason. Yeah. And you know, it, it's fun to watch them, you know, in the outfits and whatever. I think all the girls What was that, good. a half wedding dress she wore to the deli? Yeah, the deli, yeah. She had to whip out that. I was like, but you know what? That's that's the kind of shit right. she would wear. So it's like, you are giving us a little taste of like, why not wear a white tulle dress yeah. to go to the deli? And, you know, and the and even the woman looked at her like, what the fuck are you wearing? Mm-hmm. So like, there was a little bit of that. Like, yeah. this isn't normal. Right. But, you know, but people in New York, like I follow TikTok fashion people, people in New York do dress weird. You said a, most of the guys are wearing dresses there right was now. There was a lot that, of, yeah. So, yeah, okay, good, fine. Good for, yeah, it was fun. It's okay. Good. Oh, Samantha's here. Oh, okay. Well. And I will be playing Samantha and you can ask Samantha anything. So we're actually in the show. You're not talking to Kim Cattrall. You're talking to Samantha. Got it. In London. And she's agreed to be interviewed by you Mm -hmm. and she has um she's aware of what the girls are doing because she's keeping up with them on social media okay now i don't know if this question has been asked before but have you listened to the podcast are you listening to the podcast you know what the other day i was taking my little adorable dog for a walk through the london streets and i thought you know let me catch up with carrie and see what she's doing i'm just curious what can i say and i was actually confused I mean, who are these people and why are they so horny and not being satisfied? I mean, who is this Bobby Lee masturbating on an A train? I never enjoyed that no matter how wet I was. Yes. Uh, Now, they're comedians, uh, the two other people who are on the podcast with her. Confusing. Yeah. Um, I haven't laughed less than when I was stuck on another boring lunch with Miranda. One time, the two other girls couldn't show up, and I thought I was going to kill myself. I started masturbating under the table in the diner before the fries arrived. Now, have you ever uh, in London? You're in London. Yeah. Oh, that's also a very mixed uh, cultured city. Love it. Yeah. Dicks of all different colors. Yes. It's like a European rainbow. Now, have you ever been to a party with uh, more than five black people? Oh, honey, of course. And how will you handle that? It's not a problem. I handled it fine. You might remember I loved going to this fabulous restaurant owned by my girlfriend, and she happened to be black. Anyway, her gorgeous chocolate brother, actual brother, came up, and I adored fucking him for, I think it was almost two episodes. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, you wouldn't say episodes because you're actually. <laughs> well, I mean, at least it was at yeah, least yeah, a week yeah. and a half mm-hmm. okay. before she got jealous and ruined it for me. But I absolutely adored being his white girlfriend. Now, do you ever feel that uh, in, being in London, do you ever feel that maybe you're missing out on the fun that the girls are having in New York? Do you ever feel like you should fly back and just join them for a weekend or uh, a vacation? Well, I'll tell you something, Christopher, what a lot of people don't know. I've been back five times. You have? And avoided the shit out of those cunts. <laughs> I want nothing to do with their boring lunches or hear about how uncomfortable they yeah. are about pronouns or people of different colors. Oh, please. I've been with every sex, race. Uh, listen, I knew about LGBTQ. I before they even knew about LGBTQ. Okay, mm-hmm. I was into it. I loved it. I was living in the meatpacking district just so I could see drag queens fuck after a long day of singing. <laughs> Sounds fun. Now, uh, when is the last time? I know you're a very sexual person. Yes. When is the, when is the last time? What time is it down in London right now? Are you in? Is it daytime or nighttime? It's three thirty, darling. Oh, okay. <laughs> so when's the last time you had sex? Did you have sex this morning? Well, before speaking to you, I looked up your YouTube. And uh-huh. I have to say, I took out my pink vibrator. I'm also selling it on my social media, oh. like a lot of girls. I'm sure Carrie will be doing that soon, too. And um, you could just get a 10% off. But I just went off looking at some of your photos. Oh, well, that's very flattering. Thank so you. So does that count yeah. as sex? Sure, yeah. It's pretty so self-serving. Yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> Can I ask you one more question before you, you probably have to run? Of course. Then I've got to get on the call with yeah. Smith Jarrett. You remember him? He's still my client. Oh, and someone occasionally guy. screw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, just one more question. You hear a lot about OnlyFans. A lot of girls these days are doing OnlyFans. Yes. Are you familiar with it? I'm so familiar with it. Well, listen, I was going to tell Carrie when she couldn't get a book deal, I was going to say, listen, do some OnlyFans. Who really cares? People like that look. Some people, not everybody, but she could have made some money and she didn't want <laughs> my suggestion. So then we stopped talking. She thought it was trashy. Little does she know, I make $100,000 a month um, on you. OnlyFans. Wow. So people can go find me, OnlyFans slash Samantha Jones. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a nice interview. Thank you for Thank doing you. that. Thank you. Call welcome. me next week. Will do. <laughs> For sure. So she's doing fine, everybody. Yeah, she's she doesn't doing want to fine. go to those boring lunches. She no. has fabulous other friends. Yeah. It's uh the other thing I will say about um when, when people get back together after a long time apart. Once again, I'm gonna reference the Friends reunion also this year and this. And this Sarah Clona Christmas party. <laughs> yeah, well that I, I'm kinda gonna bring it back to that. Because a lot of times people will tell us, you know, to, to go back. They'll be like, I would love Chelsea Lay to get back together. You know, it would be great if you redid that show. And they're like, but would it, you know, it would be it would be sad again. Well, I think people don't realize, like, this is the perfect kind of normal reunion. Right. A couple of people from it. We're still friends. Still we right. still have our right. chemistry. But to actually really get in and do it and bring in, you know, Ben Glee. Yeah, and bring yeah. in other people and bring in other people that were. And that, I don't think we'll realize how many movie parts, how many contracts, how many, why it will never work. Yeah. yeah. Like I it'll just, just never work. It never, it will never financially make sense right. to bring back a show unless it is like friends. And I also feel, and I'll say this about some of the people in the Sex in the City uh, reboot, I feel like after such a long time, a lot of them, some people will work consistently, like Cynthia Nixon and Sarah Jessica Parker are consistently working. Some of them, I didn't, I don't know how much they've been working. And I feel like it shows in some of their performances. I feel like sometimes people forget how to act. And well, I'll, even in the, in the, what was the one that they recently re, uh, the one with uh, in San Francisco, Bob Saget? Uh, Full uh, House. Full House. They did that again. And some of the kids, Roseanne, they did that. The kids came back like, whoa, uh, these kids forgot how to act. And I feel that way. You're with, a little rusty, yeah. A little rusty. Well, I think Charlotte. I feel Mario Cantone's a little rusty. See, I think he's picked it up and he's the only one yeah. that's making me laugh. But okay, but Cher, but I think. Miranda and Charlotte, their characters. Yeah, the in, the, of, in the last ten years, they haven't. They've worked. She's yeah. gotten really into elephants. She like does all this elf saving elephants. Which one? Kristen Davis. Oh, I saw her. She was in a movie with Rob Lowe About saving el- elephants. Yes. And then, of course, Miranda. What is her name? What? Cynthia Nixon. Cynthia Nixon. Yeah, she got, ran for mayor. Yeah. She's been political. You know, right. like 
but but Kristen did do a movie that I watched on the road that my friend said, you have to watch this movie. It was a Netflix movie. I remember that. Dirty, right? Like a sex movie? Yes. She has a nanny that she starts to sexually harass. And like the girl's like making mashed potatoes and she's like going down on her behind Whoa. the- <laughs> Cynthia Nixon's? Go- I mean, wait. Kristen, no, Davis, Kristen Davis in the movie hires a nanny- to sexually harass her. Th- and they start like doing lesbian stuff together. And what is the name? I need to I'll watch this and, movie. while the husband is like literally at the other end of the island. Uh, island, you mean the island like, that they're in living the kitchen. on? The, oh, that kind the of island in the kitchen. The girl's like making So he's magic. watching. No, he doesn't know oh, what's going he's, on. He's but then she, it was oblivious. also like she was dreaming it because then the girl was also cheating with the husband and you okay. never really knew. What was going on? Was it in her mind or was she really doing this? And how does it end, this movie? I, ca- I can't remember. I, you, uh, oh, we don't know if it, Well, I don't want to ruin it. Okay. Okay, there's a weird What's ending. the name of it? I, I need God, to watch just it. just look up Deadly Illusion. Deadly oh, Illusion. I'm watching. It a great is the title. worst, best thing you will watch. Yeah, okay. Illusions. Just know that you're watching something bad. Yeah. But it's worth it. Okay. Okay. That's I'm how in. you have to go in. People always ask for a Juicy Scoop suggestion. Um, but anyway, okay. Do you think she is thrilled that she didn't do it? I follow Kim, Kim on Instagram. And she is so authentic and genuine on Instagram. Yeah. She looks beautiful. I have to follow She's her. She's got some cute boyfriend. She yeah. showed them decorating the tree. She showed like a Merry Christmas photo that was like a selfie completely not filtered, not blown out, not anything. Right. Just like, why don't you guys know I'm like in love and happy. Yeah. Yeah, and she just got. Um, she's they're redoing Queer Eye, not. Um, oh, that's oh, right. How I met, how your, I met mother. your father? How that's I right? met your father? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, isn't yeah. she also it's in How I Met Your Father? What was the Hal Sparks one about gay guys in Philadelphia? Oh, Queer as Folk. I thought they were doing Queer as Folk, and she's in that as well. I think you, they are. So I yeah. think she's got deals yeah. going. And I think it's a real like f you. Remember to all of them. years ago when Keanu Reeves decided not to do Speed Two, and everyone said he was insane and he's ruining his career. Remember that? Yeah. So he's like, I'm not going to do Speed Two. And Jason Patrick took yes. the part, and everyone's like, Oh, there goes Keanu Reeves. Well, this I believe Kim Cattrall is going to be like the Keanu Reeves. Like, look who Keanu Reeves is a huge star. I don't know where Jason Patrick is. Well, also, what's great is. You know, and just like that could go on for seven seasons, but it also could like end in like two or three. Yeah. And these two other shows that she's been booked in, they could go really long and she can do her own thing and she doesn't right. have to be in the shadow and have them constantly talk about her age and all this stuff. I mean, next week, Carrie gets a hip replacement. So it's just like, again, with the, all the old stuff. Wait, is that stuff. for real? Yes. Oh. <laughs> That's the preview. Or not next week. It's coming up. Yeah. It's coming hip up. She gets, she gets a hip replacement. Listen, I want to just say, I'm going to speak on behalf of all 50-something-year-olds here that we don't all have he- hard of hearing. <laughs> like, excuse me, what? That one guy. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> yeah. And the other the other uh, old Jewish husband or the other guy who's you know walking around, can't pee, can't. I was like, they're not 80. Oh, also, yesterday, Miranda says... When she's talking to the professor about the professor doesn't know yeah. if she wants to go through with IVF and have kids. And she's like, how is it being a mother? She's like, well, the other day my son called me a bitch because I asked him to pick up his underwear from the bathroom, from the kitchen floor. So I'm like, so he's screwing the teenage girl in the kitchen yeah. now? And then when you ask him to pick up his underwear, he calls you a bitch? Yeah. I'm like, first of all. That's not funny. That's absolutely horrible. Right. I don't know other mothers with teenage boys, but I can honestly say neither boys ever said that, called me that. Well, that's good. So to hear. I'm like, oh, really, yeah. Miranda? I'm sorry. I think you've done it. I mean, right. I don't want to say if your teenage boy is calling you that, you're not bad. I don't know. Everybody's situation is different. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Maybe he's the cap of the football team and got a 4.0, mm-hmm. or maybe he's Brady Something. screwing his girlfriend. Yeah. Either way, I don't think it's appropriate. Yeah. And I don't, and I think it's depressing. <clears throat> that's a depressing moment. I know. Like a 30-year-old that has a, a two-month-old boy watching that show does not want to watch Miranda find out that like in 17 years, you're, that two-month-old might be calling you a bitch because you've said, could you mind not screwing your girlfriend in the right. kitchen? Yeah. God. <laughs> um, oh, this is good. Tom Holland, who is the new Spider-Man, said that um, short men have more sex. 
Oh, like the guys they, they from did Selling a study. Sunset. Yeah. Get back to that. Uh, sure, maybe. I don't know. I also just think maybe it's because you're <laughs> Spider-Man. Yeah. Well, he's having, he's with that girl. In I have heard that with certain guys, like that, a shorter guy tries a little harder sometimes. I because remember girls like want to get with a tall guy, but then they they can be disappointing in the sack. But that's who like, you want. Yeah, you yeah. Mean like to try sexually. Like yeah, to, like, like work a little harder down, down there. Yeah, yeah and just just try to be a little like more romantic. <laughs> okay, that yeah. could be the case. Yeah, I mean i i I remember back in my days of Bumble and all those yes. sites. Every yes. girl would say, "No one under five nine or even six feet." You know, so that was that was a very wow. hard, fast, strict rule. Everybody wants tall. I think, right? Listen. Lower your standards. No yeah. pun. No pun intended. But I say lower your standards a little mm-hmm. bit. I would not put a number on those things. I would not put a number on your dating thing. Why don't Why don't you just turn them down? Right. Just turn them. You, just don't swipe to the right. A lot of times you would. That'd be a face to face though. But you, you have to show up and like, oh, he's five foot seven. Oh, you don't six, have to four. put your height. I'm saying like, don't you put it on the standard? But then when you see the little profile, you can't tell in a picture. You know. Mm. How tall they are. So, you, so what do you do? So you're talking to a guy, and then you like subtly say, "Well, it's it's hard for me to get through doors because I'm so tall." Yeah. How tall are you? Mm-hmm. And then he's like, "Well, how tall are you?" And then you give yourself as a girl like right. two more inches, knowing that he's going to lie about his. Uh-huh. So if you're really five nine, you're like, "I think I'm about five eleven. And then if he's like five seven, he's just like, "Well, I'm out." I, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. You know, so I guess maybe it's just easier just to say this just, is the number. Just, yeah, this is the number six feet, or, and otherwise. I mean, I guess that's the whole point of doing the online dating is to cut through some fat. You right. know? Yeah, exactly. I don't need all the bullshit. So yeah. All right. All right. Um, okay, we're gonna end on this one. Um, I'm pretty excited about Coming this, back. Chris. Yes, Joe Millionaire for Richer or Poor, January six, Fox. Joe Millionaire was a show that was out, I don't know, 15 years ago. Yeah. The, but I think this is a little different. I yeah. can't remember. The Joe Millionaire I remember is they tell all the girls that they have a chance to date a millionaire. His name is Joe. And he dates all of them just like The Bachelor. Right. And I remember there was one where there was audio of a girl clearly giving him a BJ. Oh, really? Yeah. And oh. um, anyway, he... And then in the end, he picks this girl, and then they tell the girl, he's not a millionaire, he's just a construction worker. Uh, yes. Do you want to date him or not? Uh-huh. Now, this one, that's how I remember it. This one is like two guys. Um, your, your group of girls are dating two guys they're choosing, and you don't know which one is the millionaire and which one is not. And right. they both appear to be good-looking, dark-haired guys. And um, here's my thing. How is it in this day and age that there's two guys that are that good looking and one's a millionaire that whatever pool of girls you pick won't enter the room and know them from Instagram or a DM or a Tinder or a Bumble or like how in this like 15 years ago, they were able to find hot Joe millionaire literally on a job site. Like they found him on a job site and was like groomed him and everything. How is it that? Like, this is really going to be a real surprise. I don't know. I mean, yeah, that's got to be. And also, I think they should have bumped it up to Joe Billionaire. Because, Me too. That's what I said. Yeah. I'm like, when they did the first millionaire thing, Th- who wants to something. marry a millionaire? And they yeah. found out the guy had He's all these fraud. and yeah. had all these like restraining orders and stuff. But technically. And, and he, he was a comedian, remember? He was a comedian. Rick Rockwell. He was, or Rick something? Rockwell. Yeah, yeah. And, but technically, he had a million dollars because he like owned a house in San Diego yeah. and like something else. Well, now, yeah, if you own a house in LA that you bought three years ago that jumped up in value. Yeah, you technically are a millionaire. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't mean that you're going to be living the life of. So I, so, you know, who knows? Now, I was showing this photo to my son, Drake, and he immediately said that he thinks. That the guy with the lighter colored shirt is the millionaire because he doesn't believe a millionaire would wear that, wear that black shirt. Oh, okay. That's I dis- interesting. But I disagree. I disagree as well. I I'm said the guy with the Drake. light shirt looks to have a low ponytail. Yeah. And that is more likely not to be a millionaire. And this guy looks like he could be an unlikely millionaire. Like he started some 
company or even oh, so cannabis that, or something. Is, is that and the like, plot of this? One of them is a millionaire? One is a millionaire, one is not. All this, these groups of girls have to figure out who they want it, who they think it is or who they have chemistry with. And if they're choosing, do they, who did, you know, so my, maybe two couples will be happy in the end. Maybe only one will, maybe nobody. I don't know. Can I just say, I would like to make a, uh, um, a, s- a speech about this. That yes. When this is all said and done and when they choose who it is, I want everyone to know that a con- being a construction worker is a very good career. Totally. Yes. <laughs> and let me tell you. More are needed ple- as, a, as yes. a former construction worker, electrician. First of all, none of them look like this. There's not one ever in the history of construction work who looks like these gentlemen. <laughs> I've been on the sites. But – don't let this stop you from going out and getting a degree in carpentry or electrical work. Thank you First very much. First, you're going to be yeah, highly yes. needed, and yes. you certainly can become mm-hmm. a multimillionaire with those skills, Absolutely. hiring people underneath you, starting your own business, becoming yeah. a general contractor. Like if you and, and also, girls, my mother always said, find someone handy. That, it is that, so nice mm-hmm. that they can like Was fix your father some shit. handy? No. Oh, <laughs> But he, it was worse because he thought he was. Oh, yeah. And that's... he would, like, have an ego about it. Right. So, like, everything had, like, weird, like, duct tape and, like, shit. Yeah. And then, like, we'd be trying to do something and he'd be, like, holding. And he just wasn't good at it. Yeah. And so then, like, when we moved next door, my mom would be, like, Peter, Peter, can you come over? Bob's at the VA for about three hours. Yeah. Now, Peter's handy. Yeah, because Peter's handy. Yeah. And then my dad would be, like, I don't need fucking Peter coming over here and helping me. <laughs> But she's like, please, Bob, I don't right. you'll get on the ladder and it'll fall. Like, because yeah. he just didn't want to admit it. Now, my brother in law is that handy and he totally admits it and he like hires people all the time right. and it's fine. Yeah. But if you can find a spouse that knows how to buy oh. shit, put it together, all that, it's it is so nice. So nice. I agree. And you're that person. I so. am that somewhat. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will say this, though, as we're just talking about this, I'm listening to. This podcast called Something About Miriam, which was about a reality show back in 2004 in England, okay. where kind of like a Joe Millionaire, they get this, they got a beautiful girl who was trans. Oh, okay. She had breasts, but she still had her genitalia oh. from her when she was born a boy. Yeah. And she was a model and everything, lived in New York. She was only like 22 and she was from Mexico. And um, I think there's like one episode left, but you can listen to the whole thing. Anyway, it was just – it's very juicy kind of how – what happens with it, how the, the thought t- – the thought was to trick the guys. Trick the guys, yeah. But especially in 2004, people were not nice right. about it. And it's really kind of Do you remember years sad ago, and tragic. Like the whole thing is very sad. Jenny tra- Jones, they did something along those lines and the guy murdered the that was That was like they brought a guy out. Yeah. And they said, but they tricked him on it. No, they said uh, someone has a crush on yeah. you. And they the defense the defense when Jenny Jones went on trial, her yeah. staff they said now it could be a man or a woman. They said they said that, but I don't oh. think there was. But he definitely thought it was his neighbor who was a girl, mm-hmm. and instead it was the neighbor's best friend who was gay, right? Who had the crush, mm-hmm. and he seemed to be fine after it. Yeah, but once the show aired. Or it was going to air. Something like that. He got yeah. in his head about it, went crazy, and I, sadly murdered the guy who liked him. Yeah. And um, but so I that so this this reality show that happened in London or England happened after that. Yeah. But it's the same kind of thing of a tr- like the ultimate trickery. And I think they got the idea from the Joe Millionaire thing, the producers in England. But it how is, did that it, one end? Do you know? So, so, so the way it ends is, I mean, no. So the way it ends is, she, it, she picks her guy. They reveal that um, that she is was originally born a man. Yeah. The guy that she picked was kind of like okay with it, but he didn't want to go on the trip. At the end, she gets kicked out. Of, at, gets kicked out of the Beverly Hills Hotel for wearing holy jeans. <laughs> <laughs> but another guy that was like the runner up that had like made out with her and stuff, right. he got really upset. And then the guys are really mad mm. and they um they want to get their story out to the press because they feel like they were tricked. Yeah. Really tricked being on this show and they feel like they're gonna look like fools and they're worried about they're worried about things they've said and done and <clears throat> right. so but instead they get an attorney and they sue and they settle. And the show airs, but they all got a big chunk of money 
all even the people that didn't win. Wow. And um and then she goes on to to she goes on to be on Big Brother. Oh, anyway. so so she has a yeah, little yeah. still keeping people I think still I know are, who this person is. They, they're still yeah. into her, but I think it has a tragic ender. I don't know. I've got. Oh. I, I don't want to look it up yeah. because I want to listen to the last. Oh, that's. that's but that's anyway, that's there. You go. Okay. Um, Chris, do you have any dates coming up? Uh, New York City. I guess I don't know. I, if they don't, I'm going. Oh, when is the date? January eighth. January. Only a few tickets left. City Winery, January eighth. New York City City Winery, January eighth. You know who's going to open for me? Jen Kirkman will be opening wow. for me. That'll um, be a good one. And I'm going. I'm going to be there. So that's the January eighth. City okay. Winery. You know. Let us know. Sp- uh, can I do one more? Sure. Spokane. Yes. Uh, no. T- Tacoma Comedy Club. That's. I didn't think this was coming, but February. February. Uh, Tacoma Comedy Club, February 11th, 12th, and 14th. Valentine's Day, Tacoma Comedy Club. Great time to go to Comedy Club. The week before Valentine's Day, you can fly over to Tempe Improv and see me February 5th and 6th. I'll be at the Tempe. Oh, you're doing that. You're doing the the Arizona game. Oh, good. Yes. Fun. And um, everything's at HeatherMcDonald.net. And Chris... Just go to follow Chris. Cover Vendola. to Cover uh, is my podcast. Go yes. listen to Cover to Cover. We have some. Fun yes, over there. we really do. Yeah. Um, thank you, everyone.